Hello, I'm Roger Griffiths, I work for IBM. This quick video is about using Enmon Chart and its website for quick performance graphs. We're going to give you the IP address of the website, and if that changes, then look in this YouTube video description for the new IP address, if that happens. Note that the website may be taken down at a moment's notice. This is an experiment, it's for a bit of fun, it's quite interesting for me, feedback welcome. The website accepts an Enmon file from the user's browser. It runs it through the Enmon chart shell script that's publicly available. You can do this yourself. It generates a web page full of graphs that are using the Google chart library to do that and sends it back to your browser. So what are you meant to do? Well, you'll be collecting Enmon files from AIX or Linux. You're probably collecting these all together on your server. If you move those to your laptop or maybe you have a network drive or something, Whatever operating system you have, you start your browser, you select your Enmon file, hit the submit button, up the files goes, graphs are generated and comes back into your browser. If you stop your browser or stop your laptop or whatever, then all the graphs have gone. If you want to save those graphs, then you have to use the save as feature of your browser and that will save the .html file and you can go and look at it later by just opening that file again with your browser. Now just for an extra challenge, I'm using the Edge browser from Microsoft. Now due to a lack of funding, we're going to get to the website using the IP address. We don't have a URL. When you get there, it will say there's a security problem because we haven't got SSH set up. This is all running on PowerVS AX and Apache. And it's told me that this connection isn't private. This is because it's not using HTTPS, but HTTP. And we're gonna to have to say, yes, it's, that was deliberate. Yes, it's unsafe. I'm not gonna share any private information with this website. So I'm going to use, uh, choose a file up in here, and uh, yeah, I've got in my current directory, I've got two N1 files in here that I always use as, for testing purposes. So sample C, it's got a lot of simple graphs in there that are useful for particular purposes. So I'll just select that, the file, and then I'm going to do submit. This will actually send it to the website, that file, and get back a HTML file that will actually show it inside the uh, browser in here. So it's going up and it's come back down. Now that wasn't a very big file, it was a half a megabyte. So if you're in a couple of megabytes, then it can take, you know, four to five seconds to perhaps send it up and get the data back. As the sending up is a bit slower, isn't it? Because it's uh, uploading takes longer than downloading things. Uh, and as you can see, it's very quick. It's looked at all that data and just a load of grass in here. Very, very quickly, we've got the configuration of the machine. So we can look at the disks and how things are laid out and all the usual uh, information. And then down the end in here, some mount points, all sorts of things, just there for your information. You can't graph static configuration data, so that's why it's displayed like that. And you can search for it in that what big window. Here's a top summary. If you're collecting the process data, then you'll get one of these. This is like in three dimensions in here. We have the CPU. If processors are using a lot of CPU, they're up in here. And then doing a lot of character I/O networks and disks, then they're up in here. And the size gives you a hint on how much memory is actually using. And this one machine, virtual machine, is uh, dominated by an Oracle database server, but some other little pieces uh, of processes uh, running along here as well. If we go to top commands, we have the same information, but we can actually see the, the history of it over this capture period. And we can see that the bottom one, put it up in here, the bottom one, Oracle is the dominant factor. And we've got uh, top disk, this just looks at the top 15 disks and uh, used to highlight one particular disk is very busy. Up the top in here is the first green one, which is H disk zero at 99.7%. That will be slowing down the server by a significant margin. Then we've got the CPU stats in here from Power Systems. We have two vital numbers that we want to know. The entitlement, that's the guaranteed CPU time. And then the physical CPUs is what we're actually using. And then the um, virtual CPUs are the number of CPUs you can go up to. But this orange, this little pink space at the top, you'll be borrowing somebody else's CPU if they're not using it in their virtual machine. And we've got pool idle time. So this machine's got plenty of CPU power, not uh, busy. We could put more LPARs in here or crank up the use of them in other places. We have the same famous uh, utilization numbers. Um, CPU use, you can see we have SMT4. This is a 
quite an old piece of data. I actually hand crank some of the numbers to make points for discussion and uh, showing to customers. This is actually X 6.1, so this is quite an old one. SMT4 running on a Power 7 machine. Here we've got the, the run queues, we've got the process switches, the system calls, the reads and writes, uh, system calls, uh, fork and execs, you don't want that to be too high. Uh, memory, virtual memory, file system cache, memory use, paging, swapping are all over here. We've got next line down. This is a network diagram. This is a uh, what we call an iceberg diagram. The reads are above and the writes are below. So we already know this is an Oracle database, don't we? So SQL statements, which are usually quite small, coming in all over the network and great big chunks of data being sent out back to the application over here we have fiber channel adapter stats you see we're using all of the fiber channels in here we're not doing all the work on one and there's eight there sitting there not doing anything so this is looks like a good setup we've got disk busy there's not many disks actually in here but sometimes we have hundreds of disks and you can't see them all and there's pages and pages of names in here that's what the top disk lets you sort out which ones are the ones that are doing all the work we have the disk reads and the disk writes uh, the block sizes on the disks and the number of transfers they're doing and then we got general file system in here you can see file systems are filling up over time won't go into more detail there and ipc interprocess communications which are semaphores and meshes so very quick to have a quick analyzer of that and see what's going on and see if there's something needs tuning up to make you go fast that's the whole point of this video i don't want to go into uh, any further details about it because there's other videos that looks at those graphs in detail but i just want to show you this is a quick way of getting the data without fiddling about with excel for example hope you learned something thanks for watching